Hi, I'm Grady Colane, and welcome to Sunday Journal. I'm joined today by a special guest from Barnstable County. Do you mind introducing yourself for our listeners? Sure, I'd be happy to. My name is Brian Baumgartel. I'm the director of the Wastewater Division at the Barnstable County Department of Health and Environment. That particular division encompasses a number of efforts that Barnstable County is undertaking to help the region address its wastewater problems. Uh, of course, the Massachusetts Alternative Septic System Test Center, MassTC. Uh, we also run the Aquafund program that I think we're going to talk a little bit about, mm -hmm. um, and something called the Responsible Management Entity Program, or RME, which is a fun acronym. We love acronyms in government. so uh, It makes it very <laughs> easy to keep track of all of the, the alphabet, essentially. Absolutely. Um, but thank you so much for joining us in the studio, and you are correct. We're going to be going over the ma mainly Title V changes, what that means for the local region. A lot of people are concerned about that, and also some of the benefits that are out there with mm -hmm. terms of um, loan, loan forgiveness or potentially some ways to afford uh, some funding opportunities, um, and just some of the general technology for, for wastewater, which is one of the biggest things that's facing the Cape region right now. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you for joining us in studio. Happy to. Happy All right. to. So first question is essentially, what is the big change with Title V for those who might not be aware, missed previous segments of Sunday Journal? What officially has been changed and what, what does that kind of mean for the individual resident? So what has changed is the culmination, I think, of about a year and a half worth of, worth of work that DEP has done um, to make some revisions to what's called the Title V regulation. So Title V is the set of state regulations that oversees how um, I, uh, septic systems are installed and, and used across the entire state. Um, and those regulations were recently changed uh, to try to better address uh, nitrogen loading to our bays and estuaries, which, of course, has become a pretty serious problem. I think we've all, at this point, noticed what's going on. Um, so the, the changes in regulations are really focused on trying to control those sources of uh, nitrogen coming from uh, our septic systems. I mean, we all use the bathroom. Uh, you know, maybe we own homes here or we work here. Um, and we're all contributing to the problem. So DEP's set of regulations um, will uh, make it so that homeowners who live in certain areas of Cape Cod, uh, what they're calling nitrogen-sensitive areas, um, will uh, have to upgrade their septic system to a nitrogen-removing um, advanced technology. Um, if, there's an alternative to that uh, because there's a five-year timeline associated with that uh, upgrade process that would start it's a really confusing timeline, but about two years from July 7th, which is the official, uh, what we, the fancy word we use is promogulation in regula regulatory speak, um, but it's really just the effective date of the regulation would be July 7th. So um, it would be a seven-year period from there uh, that homeowners in these areas would have to upgrade their systems mm -hmm. unless um, towns um, utilize what's called this watershed permitting process, mm -hmm. and that's the second half of this regulatory change. Um, the watershed permitting process would allow towns to forestall having their citizens have to upgrade all of their systems um, at their own expense, by the way, um, and utilize a more integrated approach. Um, so, you know, maybe using sewers or um, things called permeable reactive barriers or shellfish or uh, fertilizer controls or even um, advanced nitrogen removing septic systems. Um, it would just give them a longer time frame and better control how the different technologies are sort of mixed together. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting, and it's also good to know that it's open to so many different solutions. Mm -hmm. um, the, the understanding is that I believe this was the, the permit process is for a 20-year timeline, it, but there was a way to re-up as well, so it ends up becoming like 40 years or something. Is that correct? Yeah, I think uh, the regulations build in some um, flexibility to try to account for those unforeseen circumstances that mm -hmm. come up. Of course, we can plan all we want, um, but when it comes to spending hundreds of millions of dollars at a time, of course, uh, you have to go to town meeting to, to do that. And sometimes town meeting doesn't always go the way you want. Uh, it's just the nature of, of the beast, you know. Um, so there are some sort of unforeseen circumstance sort of provisions in the regulations where DEP could say, all right, you've had your 20 years. You know, it's looking like you're not going to hit it for, you know, these really legitimate reasons. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll give you another five years, 10 years, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But they do have that discretion. Okay. Very interesting. So as well, the uh, how do you know how many towns might be working on this watershed permit? I've heard that the wastewater plans can maybe be tweaked a little bit and just reapplied for this, but is the county plugged into that knowledge about the towns? Well, ultimately, uh, most of the towns on the Cape will end up having to do something mm -hmm. um, in relation to the watershed permitting process. Um, 
if you looked at a map of the uh, watersheds that are included in this, most of them kind of follow along the south shore of the Cape. Mm -hmm. um, so everything from Bourne down through Falmouth, um, up through the Mid-Cape and out to Chatham. Um, the major exception is Wellfleet Harbor, um, which is very close to receiving that same designation. Now, those are the ones that are kind of at the beginning of this process, that, that those watersheds are integrated into this whole process from the start. Um, once um, some more scientific evaluations occur for some of the other watersheds, those will possibly see um, these requirements pop up on their own. Mm -hmm. um, so the ultimate answer is pretty much every town is going to have to do some sort of a watershed permit unless they want their citizens to have to upgrade their systems, um, you know, which is the sort of default option in all mm -hmm. of this. Right. Okay. So I, as well, there are some opportunities for people uh, in terms of uh, assistance for this that I wanted mm -hmm. to talk about. Um, but if there, do you mind talking a little bit more about who is going to be affected at the individual level? You, we mentioned a little bit off microphone, um, talking about some of the ways that grandfathered in properties might be a bit different or how this might affect new construction. Can you elaborate more mm -hmm. for us? Um, so there are, I'll start with the funding opportunities first and then sure. um, kind of dive into the others. So um, in terms of funding, um, Barnesville County, of course, runs the Aquafund program, which mm -hmm. is a low to no interest loan program for homeowners who are faced with the specter of having to do something about their wastewater. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been on um, septic systems for decades upon decades, and now they are being told um, either that they're going to have to put in a nitrogen reducing septic system, they're gonna to have to connect to a sewer. Um, of course, those costs are typically borne fully and wholly by the homeowner, which is, you know, can be a pretty big ask when you're looking at the costs of some of these things. Um, the advanced technologies can be anywhere from 30 to $50,000, depending on site conditions. And mm -hmm. um, additionally, with sewer connections, um, you know, they'll, they'll run the pipe by your house, but you still have to pay to connect to it, which can be a pretty substantial cost as well, uh, you know, ten to $20,000 easily just for, just for that piece, mm -hmm. um, not, not considering uh, how much you paid for that pipe to run by your house or that we all paid for that. Um, so those homeowners are able to avail themselves, and we built this program, um, which has been exi in existence since 2007, so we kind of reconfigured it so mm -hmm. that there's a tiered interest rate associated with it, um, whereby folks who fall in lower interest or uh, lower income brackets um, are able to avail themselves of lower interest rates, which is kind of the flop of which we would normally see. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we're focusing the program on people who need the help the most in our area because there, you know, there are a lot of people who need a little bit of extra help on these things. Mm -hmm. um, so there's more detail on the website as to where those income breakpoints are, um, but the key qualifiers for the lowest interest rates are um, both being in the the correct um, uh, the correct income brackets, mm -hmm. and then also being part of some sort of a nitrogen reducing uh, townwide solution. Um, so you've been told by your town, you know, you shall do this now, mm. sort of a scenario. Um, so there's the Aquafund program available. Um, the state, fortunately, has um, tried to jump out ahead of this a little bit, and they've, uh, they're looking to expand the tax credit that's available. So right now, anybody who installs a um, septic system uh, to replace a failed system, I think, is a, a, um, can get up to a $3,000 credit. And the state is looking to increase that, um, I believe, to uh, $15,000 or $18,000 um, per household mm -hmm. um, for replacements, which is pretty exciting because that's, you know, it's, it can be a pretty substantial savings for folks who have to, um, you know, do something with their failed or failing septic systems. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition, there are also banks who are offering some financing. I know Cape Cod 5 has a program uh, that they're offering, and I'm sure there, there are others uh, out there. Um, but we, you know, we're trying to find the best the best options for people to be able to uh, mm -hmm. you know help them pay for these things. Has the county considered maybe like um, having a web page or something where they collect some of these other opportunities out there for uh, for uh, excuse me assistance with this program? Yeah, so um, the county does uh, run. Uh, so if you go to CapeCod.gov, um, I believe we have it on the top header right now. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about what the county is doing to help. Um, address our water quality problems. Um, and that's where you can get to some details about the Aquafund program and some of the other programs that we'll probably talk about. Um, and then there's a little bit of information about the tax credit, though that's more on the state uh, mm. to provide that information. 
Um, but I think, you know, having having something like that would be of value. So actually, I will take that personally as a suggestion <laughs> for something we should put together. It sounds funny. good. If it is, <laughs> well, write me a check at the end of the year and okay. then we'll get it. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but it sounds good. Uh, it's good to be able to have it in, in one place. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we, we um, as well touching on, like, how does this affect, like, grandfathered in properties? I mean, a lot of the... Um, uh, so wastewater problems that are related to Cape Cod, uh, something that's been highlighted time and time again is that a lot of these are uh, just cesspools or something, and they've, mm -hmm. they've been grandfathered in. Um, so do, does this actually impact those? Is that going to have a new way to kind of force that upgrade there too? As well, what about new developments? How will that be handled? So for those systems that are existing um, in, these, in these watershed areas, eventually the regulation is going to catch up with you at some point. Um, there are some provisions in there that will um, delay the timeline a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, and there, there are a couple scenarios we need to talk about too. So it's gonna depend a little bit on the watersheds. So in the case where um, the town has decided not to do this watershed permitting process and what they wanna do is have homeowners um, upgrade the systems themselves, um, that is where uh, we're talking about this sort of five year time frame. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a there's a, a little bit of opportunity there for homeowners who have just recently installed a new system, a new nitrogen reducing system, mm. uh, to delay um, integration of what the what DEP is calling best available nitrogen reducing technology. So that's just like the best thing we have right now. Mm -hmm. So if in the last ten years someone has for whatever reason installed one of these uh, nitrogen reducing technologies it might not be the best available um, but they would have a period of 10 years where they won't have to upgrade to the latest and greatest mm. um, so they're sort of grandfathered in I hate to borrow the term uh, mm. but that's um, you know for that that 10 year period uh, sort of you know um, effectively now if a town decides to go the watershed permitting route there is th those provisions aren't built into watershed permits the town could decide um, you know, it's great that you've done some sort of upgrade, you know, but still you need to replace it with this new thing. Or, you know, you've just upgraded your system. We did sewer. It's time for you to connect, you know. Mm -hmm. there, so it's really going to depend on what town you're in, what watershed you're in, and what the current situation is with the state of the technology. Um, as far as new construction goes, mm -hmm. um, new construction will be impacted by this set of regulations pretty significantly quicker than um, existing systems. So there's this two year sort of grace period that the towns individually have to um, file what's called a notice of intent to file the watershed permit. So it's a filing to say, we're gonna file for this other thing. Um, government paperwork, you know, that, that sort of thing. <laughs> Makes the world uh, go right. Exactly. <laughs> we keep the paper companies in business at least. Um, but the towns have this, this two year time frame to, to either file their watershed permit or at least this notice of intent to file a watershed permit. Um, and during that time, um, the people who are upgrading don't have to do anything necessarily. That the five-year clock doesn't start until that two-year period has fully elapsed. For new construction, however, that period is shrunk down to six months, mm -hmm. which thankfully is an expansion of what uh, DEP's original proposal was, which was the day of the uh, regulations coming online. But what that means for new construction is um, if the town hasn't filed any of their paperwork within that six-month period, um, then anybody who is looking to do new construction would be uh, required to utilize a nitrogen-reducing septic system, regardless of what the town is planning to do. Mm. I see. Yeah, yeah. So it'll, it'll impact new construction much sooner than it will existing folks. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's, so I guess that's, that's true. The, yeah. the goal yeah. here from the state. <laughs> um, but that's very interesting as well. So, But you're also the head of a lot of different uh, technological advancements here on Cape mm -hmm. Cod. Did you want to elaborate more on some of the opportunities with uh, new tech on the horizon or, or the work that you're involved in on that front in general? Sure. So um, one of the programs in our division is the, as I said earlier, the Massachusetts Alternative Septic System Test Center. Sometimes we call it the Technology Center. Mm -hmm. um, but what that is, it's a 2 facility out on Joint Base Cape Cod where we are searching for the latest and greatest in on-site wastewater treatment technologies. Um, we provide sort of this uh, approving ground where 
companies who might have an idea or they have a technology or um, in the case of some of these newer nitrogen removing technologies they've got an idea written down on a napkin somewhere um, and they want to try it out and they, you could go to somebody's backyard and hopefully you know you don't <laughs> cause a problem uh, in their house and in their backyard but most of them come to us um, because we we provide them with a location where they can install this prototype technology put it through its paces and see how good their idea actually is or not. Um, in addition to just providing that location, we also work on trying to find um, new technologies to bring into our region. Um, of course, we are in the Northeast United States, and there are 50 states in our country, and uh, you know there's a worldwide problem of waste treatment, so uh, we're always on the lookout for those um, technologies that may be out there that we just don't know about, mm -hmm. um, or don't sell their wares in Massachusetts and try to encourage them to come here so that we have um, the biggest toolbox available to us. Um, you know, We don't want to um, see everybody have to rely on one particular technology to help address this problem. Um, we're trying to find a whole suite of technologies that'll fit different situations and provide really some competition so that we're not, you know, we don't end up just giving a whole lot of money to one company, you know, mm -hmm. we're trying to spread it around a little bit because I think that's a generally a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. is, is this how Four Seas found the toilet of the future, or was that a separate uh, initiative <laughs> that uh, President jo uh, John Cox was on nope. Sunday Journal with us just recently? So oh, I wanted yeah. to uh, <laughs> build the continuity <laughs> there. Um, um, parts of that system were actually developed um, at, at the test center. Wow. Um, yeah, so in particular, the, there's some uh, electrically charged plates that were originally tested out at our facility. Um, so we, you know, it's cutting edge technology right here on, on Cape Cod in our own backyards. Uh, uh -huh. Not a lot of people know we're there, but you know, we're, we're trying our best. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. It is also interesting to see the, uh, the direct through line of testing to execution all within the same local region. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very fascinating. Um, so uh, any, any hints or kind of some forward thinking technology on the horizon that is uh, maybe, maybe in the experimental phase you wanted to share with us? Or? Um, well, in terms of nitrogen reducing technologies, as I said, we're trying to find the latest and greatest. There are mm -hmm. a few that are out there that are performing much better than the older generations of technology, mm -hmm. um, which is a good thing because we need to get as much nitrogen removal as we can. Mm -hmm. Um, and the concept there is to say um, sewers work well. They're, they'll always be the gold standard. But sewers come with a pretty high price tag. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's something that a lot of folks might not realize. You know, when um, as, a, as a taxpayer, maybe we're paying a small fraction of that cost to install all of that infrastructure. So you're talking treatment plant and all the pipes that go from house to house to house. Uh, of course, Cape Cod is not. I mean, it's fairly densely populated in certain areas, but we're not. We're not Boston. Mm. You know, we're not. We're not the major cities or metro areas. So that cost of running pipe is not a trivial. Uh, you know, small small amount of money. If you look at some of the recently approved projects, I, I come from Mashpee. Um, you know, we just approved a, a couple years ago, fifty five million dollars, and then another, I think eleven or twelve million dollars um, for the first phase of that system. And when you're looking at a new installation, probably about 75% of that cost is really just the pipes that go from place to place. So it's mm. it's an expensive proposition. It, sewers are fantastic. Um, but what we're trying to do is find these technologies that can fill those spaces where sewers are just simply just not economical. Mm -hmm. um, and what we need to do is find the technologies that remove as much nitrogen as those, um, those sewering technologies. So we're starting to find those in terms of nitrogen. Um, the one that we're turning our attention more towards in uh, more recent years, and this has become more of a national thing, is uh, phosphorus removal technologies. Mm -hmm. um, so not only do our bodies produce a lot of nitrogen, we also produce a lot of phosphorus. Um, and phosphorus impacts our freshwater um, bodies, or all our lakes and ponds, um, in a pretty significant way. Um, and here in Cape Cod, where we don't have a lot of agriculture, where fertilizers are contributing most of that phosphorus, like large swaths of the country, um, you know, here we're looking at septic systems are contributing most of that. So we're trying to identify phosphorus removing technologies now to go along with that set of nitrogen removal technologies. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, you know, we've I think we've got a couple of good ones, but. Um, the state of the phosphorus technology is behind nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Phosphorus just hasn't been, it hasn't gotten uh, the same amount of uh, playtime in the press, I guess. So, okay. Well, um, we're doing our benefit here <laughs> for phosphorus on the... Uh, <laughs> um, but part. it's good to be proactive. It's also a PFOS was something that nobody really thought about or knew exactly, about, and yeah. suddenly now it's a major deal. Yep, um, yep. So who knows what's even asked for phosphorus at this point.
Yeah, so, I mean, phosphorus, we're also concerned about those other things, PFAS uh, amongst them, but uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, we, we, a lot of us take medications. Um, I probably took an ibuprofen this morning. Mm. Our bodies don't metabolize all of that. You mm. know, we pass a lot of that through into our wastewater stream. So, you know, that needs to be um, looked at to make sure that um, we're not putting those uh, pharmaceuticals into the environment because they can have really negative impacts on ecosystems that we're trying to protect mm. um, with all this investment in nitrogen removal. Um, and it, it, that applies whether we're talking about on-site systems or we're talking about sewer systems. A lot of these compounds are very difficult to, to break down and remove. PFAS in particular is one. I mean, we call it forever chemical. Um, that should tell you something about how difficult it is for us to actually do something with it. So, mm. um, you know, we're trying to look at that whole suite. We don't want to in inadvertently create another problem in the process of trying to solve another problem. So, you know, try to be a little bit more foresighted than maybe has been in the past. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, as well, so the there seems to be this uh, a debate or there ends up be becoming this um, uh, perhaps a, a, a little bit of a battle that kind of forms, especially amongst people who aren't fully plugged in and perhaps myself included, between uh, these innovative alternative septic systems or just septic systems in general versus sewer. Mm -hmm. Would one be able to do the entire job of the other? Is IA enough? Do you have to mix? Is, is one superior? Is there something that is uh, being in investigated there at the local test center? or I would say the answer to that question is much more nuanced than just either or. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we even need to look beyond just those two options um, into some of the other um, alternatives that are out there. If you look at um, the, what we call the 208 plan that C Cape Cod Commission put together, it's the watershed management plan that they did. Um, that looked at a whole suite of, uh, I don't even know how many technologies, 75 something technologies that are on their list of different ways that you could treat wastewater. So everything from sewers, obviously conventional treatment, to IA systems, to permeable reactive barriers, fertilizer controls, something called fertigation, um, which is another interesting whole other There will subtopic. be a bingo sheet on <laughs> capecod.com yeah. for all these vocabulary if I, words. If I no. list them <laughs> all. Um, you know, this huge range of different um, technology options that we have, and we really need to be thinking about what's not what's the one solution that's going to fix all this problem. We need to be thinking about what is the blend of solutions mm. um, because we could sewer everything, and that would... Mm that would fix our nitrogen problem, but we'll be broke, you know. Right. Uh, it'll be far too expensive to sewer the entire Cape. And, you know, even after the watershed plans are done, um, considering the ones that are moving forward right now, you know, only 35 to 40% of Cape Cod is really ever going to see sewer, even under the current, you know, sort of slate of technology. So um, just because it's it's hugely expensive. So finding that, that mix of technology. So using sewers where sewers make the best sense, where it's, where we have high density, where we have houses that are close enough together that septic just doesn't work well. Um, and then we have other areas where it's just not dense enough to justify running a pipe from house to house where they're separated by large distances and you're mm -hmm. just adding costs. Um, you know, I think we need to be very uh, open-minded to looking at what the slate of solutions are that are out there. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, that's about all the time that we have, unfortunately. But is there anything else you wanted to highlight for our listeners, either about some of the assistance available, other programs coming from Barnstable County, or just things that you really want to make sure we touch on related to these new changes? Um, I guess the other program I would talk a little bit about is where um, we're talking about using on-site systems for this wastewater treatment uh, sort of goal um, is not just... Uh, how do we put it in the ground, but how do we manage that system? Uh, mm. A lot of people don't think about their septic system as infrastructure. So we'll talk about infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, you know, our water system, those kinds of things, sewers. Mm -hmm. um, but in reality, our septic systems are part of a, an infrastructure network that's just, it's broken up into small pieces mm -hmm. rather than one large network of traditional pipes and those things. Um, so in order to make sure that they're functioning properly, that they're funded equitably so that homeowners themselves aren't faced with huge bills associated with running these technologies, we want to make sure that we put a program in place. It's called the Responsible Management Entity. It's mm -hmm. like the equivalent of a sewer district for on-site systems to help mm -hmm. homeowners and towns manage those systems in a more integrated way. 
Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Is there a, can you give a rough timeline for how this is shaping up, essentially? Is it already in its first few stages? or? Yeah, I mean, we're working with the few, first few pilot towns, uh, Wellfleet, Bourne, Falmouth, uh, working a little bit with Barnstable, too, mm-hmm. um, to try to put together what we're calling the pilot. You know, we start from a small spot, and we try to build from there, um, because this is something that hasn't been done to this sort of scale before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's important we try to figure out the the pros, the cons, and all those things. So we've gotten a good amount of grant money at this point. Uh, I think we've uh, pulled together over $2 million for this program uh, over the next five years to get it off the ground and running so we can we can help homeowners address their all these water quality problems that, you know, we don't want to leave them off to just say, well, you're not on sewer, sorry, you know, uh. deal with it on your own. Um, I don't I don't personally think that's fair. I don't think that's an equitable way of doing it. So, um, you know, we're trying to help, uh, help those homeowners who are from getting left behind. Mm-hmm. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing about this new program. Sounds like the uh, the next five to decade or so is going to be a very uh, transformative few years for mm-hmm. wastewater on Cape. So maybe we'll see some pretty significant changes. Um, so very interesting. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today to have this conversation. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm Gordy Colane, and this has been Sunday Journal.